Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about cycle cart parts. So, hey, uh, lots of new guys following us on YouTube and on Facebook and finding us on cyclecartclub.com. So I thought it'd be a good chance to go over the parts list. I've uploaded a new list on our Cycle Carts North America page and the Arizona Cycle Cart Club page. It's in the Files tab if you're on the Facebook pages. And I've got it here as well. And I'm gonna go over some of the parts, kind of show you what these are. Uh, it's one thing to look at a piece of paper, another thing to understand what we're actually talking about. I know if you've watched some of my builds, you've seen these parts, but I'm gonna try to explain some of the things that, that we look at. So uh, let's get started. Okay, so I'm gonna assume you know what an engine is. So I'm not gonna show you an engine, but a, two, a Prodigy 212 or a Honda GX200. Um, springs so market renegade cycle carts now here's this card in the back of it if you want to pause it his phone number is there and his email address he's got a website as well cyclecart.net i think also um renegade cycle carts anyway he's got all these parts on there uh, he just sent me this part here this is a spring shackle that's very nice it goes with the springs he made and in, in the full disclosure this is not mark spring this is the buggy spring it's got three holes marks only has one hole which is much better because this is a kind of a weak link. These tend to break right here. The way this works is this little nipple right there locates your spring right there. And then he makes, he sells you these very thick U-bolts. That's going to mount your axle. So Mark's made these really nice pieces. He's laser cuts them or I'm not sure if he water jets or laser cuts them. But then he welds in this little button head screw or bolt. And it's flush, right? So your axle can still turn. This just locates it so that you're always centered makes it nice I've done that on mine and I think Mark uh, followed what I was doing on that which is a nice compliment but these are very nice I just got these unboxed I'm gonna be probably gonna put these on the Aston Martin because they just they look very nice but I handmade mine and they're not quite as symmetrical but anyway so these are the buggy springs um, like I said this has three holes it has three holes because when they when they come to you there's an extra helper spring on here that has a bolt through it and then you these are the other bolts you would use to mount it to the seat or in some cases to the floor and then the other because it comes with this other part here now they're all kind of screwed, screwed together so it kind of goes like that um, you don't need any of these i've got a, a giant collection of them because of all the buggies that buggy seat sets i bought i ended up with these extra sets so maybe someday i'll find a use for them let me get these out of the way so Mark's doesn't come with a helper spring, so I, you don't need these. They just end up with extra metal. But uh, the buggy seat ones are typically about the same dimension, inch and a quarter by 24 inches. The difference is they're not consistent. Uh, one set might be a little flatter than another. Mark's apparently a little more consistent and have a little less arch in them. So get your front end down a little bit better. If you look on the list here, Stevie, here's Mark's information. And again, this is downloadable. There's a link here to his, his website. And so he's got his leaf springs, his spring perch. He sells a front axle assembly and rear hubs. So the, the rear hubs Mark sells are much nicer. They're, they're kind of what's on the Aston Martin. I don't know if you can see this. There's an outside plate. You can see this here. Uh, traditionally, we didn't use this. We would just bolt it straight to the aluminum webbing. And it was a little bit of a weakness. Um, the Azusa part that we all used when we started off, this is what Stevenson started with. He took this Azusa. Azusa, rather, ATV hub, and you have to grind down the bolts, and you have to drill holes that match up with the holes on your Honda wheel. There's already four holes on all the Honda wheels, so trying to match that up. In this case, these aren't even lined up with it. But the way this works is it goes in the backside. And then your bolts would come through here, relying on this aluminum webbing to hold the whole thing together. So that is not as good as what Mark does. Now Mark makes this nice plate that goes on here and he makes a nice uh, milled part that goes back here without these goofy pieces of steel on it. I don't have one of his hubs to show you, but it's a much nicer part than this. If you go on his website, you'll see the difference between this and what Mark's selling. Um, and based on the price he's charging, I think these are like $60 a piece. So 120 bucks from Azusa. Mark's only charged 145, so this is what Mark's giving you is a great value. And this is, um, it works, but it's not the best. 
Uh, let's see, what else is in there? Edit that bit out. <laughs> um, so we talked about the spindles. Oh, the spindles. So uh, when we first started off again, Zeus had made spindles. I don't have one of those here, but this is Mark's spindle. Uh, this has KPI and Ackerman built into it. This is a three-quarter inch. It's got bushings in it. This is what's on the Aston Martin. It's a, this is a slightly newer designed version. The arm is a, a little bit of a different angle. But uh, this is a very nice unit. It's very stiff and sturdy. It doesn't flex around and move. Whereas the Azusa parts, the geometry is very rudimentary and very a lot of slop in it. Uh, so steering shaft. So we use a 5 8 inch steering shaft typically. And this is what I have here. This has already got the uh, Speedway quick release mount on it. So these are 28 inches or 34 inches rather. And normally you would just weld a Pitman arm on here on this end or the other end either way. Um, I think in this case I did this backwards. So this is, we initially had this on a, on a uh, rack and pinion steering setup. So anyway, it's just an extra part that I have laying around. Um, what's next on my list? We did tie rods, steering shaft, uh, steering wheel. I don't have an extra one here. Um, but this is the steering wheel off the Aston Martin. And it says that Speedway quick release. You just press this button and it releases. This is a very nice steering wheel. This is from Speedway Motors. This is not a go-kart steering wheel. This is like a $100 steering wheel. So it's aluminum and polished and very, very nice. You can use any go-kart steering wheel that would fit that 5 ace steering shaft. Uh, tie rods, I don't have extra ones, but they're pretty basic. Right here is the tie rods. These are 5 16 by 24 inch and we have to cut them to size to make them fit so you do have to do some threading if some of my videos you'll see me re-threading those rods with the uh, chasing the threads with the, with the proper tools uh, azusa axle bearing so that's this part number here az 1861a these are going up in price quite a bit now they're 37 dollars each when you get this kit it's a, it's a flanget so it's got two bolts and this flange is adjust, so your framers are almost never square, right? So this is adjustable in the frame. It comes with this weldment. Some guys will weld it on top of the frame. Um, when I've done a differential, I've welded to the frame to create a gusset to, to strengthen it. So that works well. There's little set screws here to lock it to your axle. I always use a locking collar because uh, these things tend to back out. So this keeps the axle from sliding back and forth in your in your bearing. So it keeps it centered in your in your chassis. And you can weld these on or just bolt them on. If you're not going to weld, you can just bolt them on. It still strengthens it. Uh, locking collar, like I said, you're going to need, I think I used about six of these. This one's pretty rough looking. It's been, this is off an old cart. But uh, you can get ones that don't have the little keyway. In fact, it's better to get ones without the keyway because part of this job of this is to keep the keys from sliding out, right? So when you put this on your, for example, on your uh, sprocket, keyway will be in here and this six screws all that's holding that in there it's kind of with friction these are almost notorious for backing out so I always put one on each side that does a couple things it keeps your sprocket from walking back and forth and dropping your chain and keeps your keyway from coming out so that's a handy tip there so don't depend on 100% on that little part right there because sometimes these things will just fly out of your thing if, you, if you're not lock tightening it enough See. Oh, that's, that takes me back to the sprocket holder. So here's the Azusa sprocket holder. You want to pull it in here. These are the part numbers I'm using right now. Uh, the heavy-duty sprocket holder, which is this part here. And then the 72 sprocket. This is actually a 62s, I think. Yeah. This is a 3560. Uh, on the Aston Martin and the Duesenberg, we're running a 72 tooth because we're running a 12 tooth on the torque converter. So it says your 12 tooth, 35 chain. So it depends on what torque converter you get what sprocket you should order. So if you get your torque converter first, and always try to get a 35 chain, just it just fits better. If you get a 40 or 41 chain, that's okay. You just might have to clearance some aluminum on the torque converter itself. Um, so that's, that's why I'm running a 72 tooth sprocket. So you get the sprocket holder and the sprocket, and this, this works well because it's sturdy. There's other designs that flex too much. Anyway, that's why I like this one. And then your brake. Get the biggest one you can fit in there. Uh, try to get the diameter close to what this what your sprocket is, so that when you put your framing together, 
they're compatible. So you don't have one that's too small, one that's too big. Okay, so this is the Azusa engine plate. Part number AZ8190, it's about 10 bucks. It's right here. And you can get that from several places. Most of my stuff I get from MOG Supply. And so that works great for your motor plate. Just, you know, brace it well. Okay, so the pedals, uh, brake and throttle pedal. I get the cheap Azusa ones. Here's the part numbers here. There's a right and a left. AZ1809 and AZ1811. Let me show you what those look like. So those are easy to adapt for hydraulic brakes or mechanical brakes. And they work well. I've got them on all my cycle carts. Uh, okay, so let's talk about axles. So there's a the last axle I bought was called a deluxe flex proof axle. Short end. When they talk about short end, they're talking about this. So the difference in that little offset right there compared to this one. It's about a well, quarter of an inch or so different. But it makes your axle narrower or wider and it also affects this offset here and you put your this one doesn't matter because it's got a really deep offset but some of the things like VKC's and maybe marks when you put this on here you might have some threads uh, some flat area there which you need to use some washers before you bolt because you bolt this on here the nut will go on here so and that's another thing too when you put that on your keyway is going to go in there and that'll lock this axle on the on the this hub on the axle and your nut will go in here. That's how you lock the axle on the hub. So there's differences in that. So depending on what you want to do, I don't think it's super important, the offset here. Like I said, it can be made up with either a washer or if you have a different hub, it's not a, probably not a factor. But it will bring your wheels in slightly. Okay, let's talk about brakes. So I've used several different sets of brakes. I've used everything in the cheap Amazon brakes. The, the $18 calipers, and recently I installed a Yerf Dog Spider Box Go Kart caliper from Amazon. So there's the words Yerf Dog Spider Box Series Go Kart. If you look up that on Amazon, it's about 50 bucks for the caliper, and it works really good. It's got huge, huge pads on it. It's for a big Chinese two seat go kart. So nice, big, heavy go karts designed for that. So there's plenty of brakes for a cycle kart. Uh, I've also used Suzuki GSX-R600 rear master cylinder and caliper from a 2005 or earlier Suzuki GSX-R600. The later ones, the 2006 and up, are not going to be easy to adapt because there's an integral part um, on the motorcycle that you have to have and it doesn't work well. So this works great. You can easily make a bracket for it. Uh, the master and the caliper. Uh, you can get the master cylinder aftermarket on Amazon for about 20 bucks. And if you're going to be buying any sets, I would get that caliper for or that. Um, Master cylinder for everything. I used it on the Yerk Dog project and on my son's Aston Martin, and they work great. Um, there's other items you might need. You might need a universal master cylinder reservoir. You might need um, hydraulic brake line. So I got a brake line 2400 millimeters by 10. That's the size it needs with a banjo bolt. And that's what hooks a, the caliper to the master cylinder. Because you got to go about 74 inches roughly on these, on these chassis. Um, the next thing to talk about is tires, inner tubes. Uh, I like the Michelin City Pros because that's what's available. I used to use the Gazelles, but those are no longer available. So the size you're looking for is 2.75 by 17. Um, they're about 30 bucks online. You'll need inner tubes and rim strips. So if you look at this, JP Cycles is where I order mine from. Uh, quick release hub we talked about. Um, axle bearings, so the front axles on the stock Honda wheels. So these are the bearings I get from a bicycle supplier. So there's the part number. Okay, and then here it is on the paper. Real World Cycling is where I get this from. It's a 19.05 millimeter, which is roughly three quarters of an inch by 37 millimeters by nine millimeters. You need four of them. About five bucks each last time I bought them. This is what it looks like. And it just fits right in that Honda wheel. Gotta give it. You hit it with a rubber mallet, it'll go in there. So it's a nice snug fit. And it's probably a little dirty in there as well. I know it doesn't want to come out. Anyway, so that's the Honda front wheel. So when you're doing this too, you put your bearing on the other side and the premium bearing here, there's a space in there. You want to cut a piece of pipe to go in between to relieve the, the um, lateral forces off the bearing. So otherwise the bearings might pull through in here when you're bolting your wheels on. 
Okay, so wheels. Uh, my friend Andrew, there's his email address, has brand new wheels in stock. These are made in Thailand. They are remanufactured or brand new versions of the CT90 wheel. Um, he ships all four from Phoenix, Arizona. So if you're near Phoenix, you can probably pick them up. And here's the list of the parts. One by three, 062 or 060 thin wall tubing for their for the frame, front axle, inch and a half. Now, Renegade does make that, so you don't have to worry about it. The shackles, the brackets, all that good stuff. Sort of nuts and bolts. Um, I use a lot of 5 16 nylocks, so buy them by the, in bulk instead of buying them one at a time. Uh, the aluminum I like to use is 50 thousandths thick, 3003 grade for anything that's um, needs to make a curve. If it's going to be flat material, it doesn't really matter. So that is a real quick rundown on the parts. That's not every little thing. Uh, oh, I almost mentioned for your uh, uh, spring mounts. So these are the spring mounts. Get the camera down here so you can see it right there. Those little shackles. Uh, a lot of metal suppliers will have these. They're just a little part that's designed for fences. And this one I bought is actually I bought the wrong one. This is a three inch, but it should be two inches from hole to hole. That seems to be the right length for the proper travel. And if you have any questions, you can contact me. Here's my email address, my phone number. If you have any questions, anything I can help you guys out with, I I'm happy to help you. Hey guys, thanks again for watching our videos. I really appreciate it. Thanks for all the subscriptions and all the comments. Um, hit the little bell if you want to see more coming up. And follow us on Facebook on Cycle Cars North America. And we're also at uh, www.cyclecarclub.com. And if you're in Arizona, join the Arizona Cycle Cart, play, uh, Cycle Cart Club page. We we'll hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Thanks.